Oh man, summer night in the aquarium basement. Uh, just finished doing some maintenance and uh, feeding the big boys in the three gallon, 3,000 gallon back there. And I thought uh, it's time we do a deep dive on how I take care of the sharks and rays in Predator Bay. You know, of course, we'll also go over updates on Predator Bay. We'll show you the new fish that's been in here for a few months and uh, bring you up to date with what's going on in the tank as well as feeding them. But mainly we'll do a deep dive on what they eat, how often they eat, what supplements I give them, the whole nine yards. So. Uh, Let's, uh, let's take a quick look at the tank and then we'll go back there and we'll get their food ready. All right, so as you can imagine, uh, they know it is uh, feeding time. So they're getting a little anxious over here, but let's, uh, let's swing around and uh, get an update on everybody here. Of course, uh, Old Steady, the Stingray, all good. <laughs> the groupers, they're getting positioned. They know where the food comes in, comes in the middle here and they are, are both prepared. To jump on it and uh, you know I mentioned that there's a new fish in the tank in the aquarium and we know the blue line grouper and we know the Minneapolis grouper but what you probably have never seen and I know you haven't seen it because I haven't showed it yet is we now have a blue dot our peacock grouper so he is uh, the new boy in town and uh, the way it works with the groupers he's right now getting molested by the uh, the uh, uh, wow coral cat shark drawing a blank there. Uh, so the way it works with the groupers is uh, the new guy gets relegated to this corner and over time, at the beginning, they give him a lot of the business and then over time, they allow him to get more and more into the tank and uh, everything sorts itself out. We're about halfway through that process. Uh, they're not attacking him anymore. Or when I say attacking, like basically fronting him, pushing him back there. You know, he comes out, he, he does swim around. Uh, and he's and it's about halfway to being to where he could just go anywhere in the aquarium uh, The same sort of thing happened with the blue line and the miniatus Originally the blue line uh, didn't let the miniatus come anywhere other than that corner uh, Then you know slowly over time they realized there's plenty of food here for everybody So everything worked out just fine. So you're gonna see tonight that uh, That blue dot peacock grouper he chums right out and gets food as soon as I feed and the other thing too is he's gonna be the biggest uh, by far so it's just a matter of time before he becomes the dominant grouper in the tank. So uh, these guys, uh, they're gonna have their work cut out for them when that happens. Uh, of course, the, uh, the horn shark's doing great. And like I said, both the bamboo sharks are doing great. But speaking of the bamboo sharks, so remember we, we added all this extra rock here to give the, uh, the eel uh, some more breathing room from this particular bamboo shark over here who just has a fascination with him. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it probably doesn't look like what you remember. Yeah, he knocked it all down. He, he's, he's insane. This guy will just stick his face in there and just, you know, push and push and push and knock the rocks all over. So, uh, the kind of the funny thing is he knocked them all down and the eel likes to come out and go underneath there. So, it still sort of serves a purpose, but uh, that's not really how I want it to be. So, I think I'm going to get that fixed up here. Um, you know, pile them back up there and see if the third time's a charm uh, with a knucklehead over here. He's got all these nice big caves that you know he uses, but then he also just wants to push his way into here. So I don't know <laughs> who can tell with these guys, but uh, yeah, we'll do that, and uh, we'll definitely the, we'll try to get some footage of the peacock grouper when he comes out to feed. Um, he's got some just amazing colors. Can't wait till he gets a little bigger. You know, every fish comes in when you have big fish in a big tank. All the new guys are always a little on the small side, so. Uh, it'll be really nice when he's a little bigger and he can just be out all the time and not be worried about the uh, Mr. Minneapolis grouper, number two in charge, you know, second in charge, bothering him. But you can see they got their pecking order. It goes blue line, Minneapolis, and then peacock. Uh, but that will change. In the long run, I think it's going to end up being the peacock grouper will be the top dog size-wise, uh, then the blue line, then the Minneapolis. All right, let's get back there and, uh, and I'll show you what do we have for food for these guys and we'll start getting everything prepared. Oh, I love that coral cat shark. Okay, as you can imagine, uh, all the fish I have, you kind of have to have a separate uh, fish food freezer, and that is indeed what I have right here. So, uh, on the right-hand side, you see just your normal fish food, uh, your your uh, frozen foods that are in uh, uh, cubes or you know sheets or whatever. And then on the left side, you see kind of different. Uh, these are the things that, that go for sharks. Uh, so we got, uh, we got some shrimp. We're gonna get, take that out. 
And let's see, we'll do some, some uh, silver sides, we'll do some fish. And let's see, we'll do more of those, some fish fillets. You know what, let's do some squid. Okay, so this is the typical feeding. Uh, basically, we'll get either some chopped uh, silver sides or smelt, some, some squid, or sometimes we'll do the smaller squid with the arms, and then uh, some shrimp. Uh, the shrimp, the, everybody loves the shrimp, and they're, they're really good, uh, sort of an inexpensive mainstay, um, but you need to mix it up. I, I also have some fish fillets in there, different types of fish fillets, uh, as well as some uh, mollusks, uh, you know, uh, like some clams and things like that. So you gotta mix it up so they get a good vitamin mineral profile. And with the Sharks and Rays, we also supplement, a, a, in addition to that, with the Missouri uh, Exotic Animal Nutrition Shark and Rays Supplements. Uh, I use these for a long time. Every time I've ever kept sharks, I've always used these guys, and uh, they've always worked great, so I've stuck with it. Um, at any rate, so let me go ahead and get this food defrosted, and then I'll show you how we put the supplements in there in the food for the sharks and the rays, and then we'll get in there and feed. Then we'll get in there and I'll show you how I feed them. There's a particular order because all these guys have their own uh, eating identity, I'd say. Like, you can't just say, oh, I'm just gonna feed this guy or that guy. You have to feed them in a certain order because they're very aggressive feeders. So uh, until those groupers get their food, you're not feeding anybody else, period. And then after that, you're not feeding the eel unless the big shark's been fed and so on and so forth. But uh, we'll go through the packing order. We show you how to do it. And uh, so we do some targeted feeding. We make sure that uh, you know, we do a little broadcast at first to keep the groupers busy. Then we do some targeted to make sure sharks and rays get their vitamins. And then at the end, we do a little bit of broadcast feeding again, just to get everybody filled up. Because as I'll tell you a little bit, we don't feed every single day. So uh, let me get the food prepared. Then I'll talk about the feeding schedule and then we'll go feed them. Okay, for tonight's menu, we're gonna do some squid, some shrimp, and some uh, silver, silver sides, chopped silver sides. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna use, so different fish have uh, different tastes, so the grouper will eat everything. The eel usually likes squid or fish. Sometimes we'll eat uh, shrimp, depends on his mood. The sharks will eat everything, they're vacuum cleaners and uh, the ray will eat everything. So I guess ultimately it's just the eel that's finicky sometimes. Uh, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pack, obviously I, these are all frozen, so I'm gonna thaw all these out. I'm gonna bring them back to the plate after they're thawed out. And then uh, we're gonna pack um, some of the shrimp and uh, some of the fish with the, the, the vitamins. And then, uh, then we'll get everything else cut up into the right size pieces and, and then uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, once everything's thawed out and chopped up, uh, go ahead and arrange it because I need to go ahead and insert the uh, vitamins into the food. So uh, basically the large bamboo gets three, uh, the medium bamboo two, uh, horn shark two, uh, e or uh, uh, halari ray two, and then the uh, coral cat shark one. So what I'm gonna do is, let's see if I can uh, hold the camera and uh, do this at one time. Let's see here. Okay, couldn't really hold the camera while doing it, but basically I take these little tongs right here and I just push the food inside the, uh, the fish like that. And the same thing with the shrimp, just insert it into the end. So as you can tell, they know what it means when I open up the top, he's, he's eyeballing uh, the, the place where I put the food in. Everyone's ready to go. They, they know what's up, it's feeding time. But uh, that begs the question of, so do I feed them the same way all week long and who gets fed how often? So. The, the sharks, they only get fed two or three times a week. And, um, and well, yeah, usually two, <laughs> two to three. Uh, versus the, um, the uh, groupers, they get fed uh, every day. Uh, so they get bigger meals when, they, when I'm feeding the whole tank and then smaller meals uh, on the off days, just a little bit of shrimp. Uh, and the eel, he pretty much, at this point, he just indicates when he's ready to eat. Uh, he comes out like this whenever he wants food, and so whenever he comes out, I just give him food. Because uh, the other times, you can put it right in front of his face, and he doesn't want it, he doesn't want it. So uh, I just let him dictate to me uh, when he's ready to eat. And then uh, the ray and the, and the horn shark, they're the same as the other sharks, where uh, they do just get uh, the feeding twice, two to three times a week, 
uh, like a good feeding. And the coral cat shark, because he's the youngster in the tank, if, if he comes out and he's swimming around and he looks like he's hungry, I will go ahead and uh, just feed him then. All right, so like I said, the first thing I have to do is, so I have this plate of food and we have the pieces up in the top that have the vitamins in it. And then we have the rest of it down here. Uh, and what I have to do is I have to throw in a little bit of food just to get the uh, groupers going. And then I can go ahead and start target feeding everybody else to make sure they get their vitamins. Uh, and the other thing I want to mention is that I don't feed the vitamin supplements every single feeding uh, for the sharks and rays, uh, just one time a week uh, for the vitamin supplements. Okay, let's get a little broadcast feeding in there for the, uh, for the groupers. So we'll take a little bit of uh, squid and go ahead and uh, we'll cut one of these shrimp in half and we'll just throw this in, just broadcast feeding for the groupers. And you can see they're, they're coming up. Oh, see, see that peacock, he just got two. He'll be growing in no time. Uh, and now what we wanna do is go ahead and start the target feeding. Normally it's hard to get the eel right away, but he seems pretty hungry, so yeah, there you go. So he just got himself a piece of fish. He'll go back in his cave, and now we can start target feeding the big boys. So let's start with, uh, the biggest uh, bamboo shark over there. Um, let's see, he's coming around. And, oh, I'll tell you what, working the camera and the tong at the same time, it's definitely not easy. All right, here he comes, here he comes. So, huh, does he not want the fish? <laughs> uh, he's working on it. Of course, he's gotta knock it in there so he can move the rocks around some. Uh, I'm not sure if he got it or not. Let's see. Uh, ow! <laughs> Tried to move the rock and I got the uh, the ray biting my fingers. Uh, I think the uh, I think the coral cat shark might have nabbed that food away from uh, the big bamboo. We'll go ahead and target the uh, the ray. He's always always up to eat everything. So that is his uh, food with the vitamins in it. And then now what we need to do is take some of these uh, shrimps with the vitamins in it. And we need to get the horn shark fed. So wait for him to loop back around here and boom, there we go. He's got his vitamins. And now the last one is the other bamboo shark who is over here not near where I'm feeding. So let's see if he loops back around. Let me get in position. So I'm ready when they come around. And let's see. Almost wanna, I, I'll uh, give another feeding to the large bamboo because I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the coral cat shark got his vitamins. <laughs> so let's see, here we go. Let's see if he wants a shrimp. There we go. So he got a, a shrimp with vitamins. So then now all we need to do is just get the last bamboo with the last vitamin shrimp which is right here. And let's see, see if we can get him to, to come out. He's over there. Now, of course, there's always a chance the grouper will try to grab it. Uh, let's see, nope. And he's swimming away. Yeah, he had, they had a big feeding last time, so not super surprised. Go ahead and get him that. Um, not super surprised that the bamboo sharks uh, aren't as hungry as normal. I've been uh, feeding them a little more just because uh, the, the big guy was giving the, the eel a little bit of business, but that's chilled out. So uh, I don't know if I've kept them busy moving all these rocks around <laughs> or if he's having more food and uh, chilling out a little bit. But either way, uh, the eel's back to coming out again and taking the food and everything, which is great. Uh, and uh, the bamboo shark is not bothering the eel like before so that is great also and so here we'll just do a broadcast feeding so now everybody can just come over and just load up you know because like for this guy here he's not gonna be eating for a few days the groupers are just absolute pigs so they'll they'll uh they'll finish up anything and the other thing too is you, you can't really go wrong with the broadcast feeding because basically the rays and the sharks are they're vacuum cleaners essentially so 
you're, you're not going to have uh, food just laying around. Uh, I mean, unless you do something insane, like just throw ridiculous amounts of food in the tank. These guys are going to hoover it all up, you know. And it's actually kind of nice that, to give them a little bit of time, too, because uh, they do eat it, and then they do feel temporarily, right? Kind of just like a person, you eat a bunch, and then, you know, you wait 10, 15 minutes, and you get your second win, and these guys are the same way. Uh, and it's, it's one of those things where you want... Uh, a lot of people say, like, oh, keep uh, all these other kind of fish with these guys. You know, keep big tangs in here, or angels or whatever. And the tough thing about that, or even triggers, is the feeding. So these guys, they eat larger meals every once in a while, every few days, versus your your other fish, like your triggers and your your tangs and everything. They, you know, they want to eat every single day. And these guys are going to smell that. They're going to kind of go crazy, but then it's not for them. It's hard enough just getting the groupers their food every day without, you know, getting the sharks all wild up. Um, much less trying to feed a bunch of flake and everything like that. Sorry, just sort of keeping track of uh, how the eel's negotiating with those guys. I really got to sort this out. I need, unfortunately, I don't have these huge rocks. I don't have any more of those. I need to get, I don't know, I got them a long time ago. Um, so I don't know where you get them these days, but I need to get some some really big rocks. These little these little rocks here, I mean, they're not, in the scheme of things, they're not little rocks, but compared to these sharks, they are. Uh, and those sharks are powerful. I mean, uh, one time I was working in here, that bamboo was, I don't know, something riled him up and he swam and just swam right in my arm. And it was like, it was pretty, you know, pretty legit. I was like, oh my gosh, he's got some, he's got some strength to him, you know? Uh, you know, he's pushing three feet long and, uh, you know, that's kind of tells you right there why you need a tank that is six feet front to back when you see him at, at just three feet, which isn't even the max size. And you imagine, see if I can go on the side here, see him when he comes around, you know, you imagine him in uh, something that's just two or three feet front to back, there's just no way. So you got the coral cat. This guy, it's really cool because he's out at about so much more nowadays, uh, but definitely I wish he would uh, grow a little faster. I sometimes worry with the uh, the bamboo sharks growing so fast and the other sharks, you know, much more moderate growth. Uh, I mean, that being said, the, the other sharks have never bothered, the bamboo sharks have never bothered the coral cat or the horn shark. Or the ray for that matter, uh, really just the eel, <laughs> just the one bamboo shark uh, would sometimes bother the eel. But like I said, uh, that is stopped. I mean, you can see the eel, he moves around a lot now, he's very active and I only feed him by him coming to me. So he comes out, he swims up and then if he does it, I feed him. Uh, and uh, so that seems to be working and this is the big bamboo here and you know the aggression seems to have stopped so uh, It's hard to say exactly what caused it, but what I have going right now seems to be working. So I'm just going to stick with uh, uh, With that and uh, hopefully that seems to keep the peace. So I am definitely looking forward to the uh, The uh, peacock grouper the blue dot grouper growing up because uh, I'd love these guys uh, These actually are my three favorite groupers uh, so I have all three in here now. I pretty much have the stock that I want to have in this tank. Uh, the only thing I do want to add is some some grunts, some like French grunts or yellow stripe, some some very pretty active fish that I can feed on the same schedule uh, that I feed the groupers, and they can eat large chunks of, of fish or, or meat and everything. Because one thing you notice here is after over a year, probably a year and a half now. That sand bed is still perfect. You know, we don't have an invertebrates in here really, other than some small snails because you know, all these sharks and rays would eat them. But the system is working. The, uh, the live rock, the sand, there's no, no hair algae anywhere. It's in balance, you know? And I don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize that. Like for example, if I was feeding a bunch of little foods that these guys couldn't clean up, eat whole, and I don't have crabs and things like that to scavenge it. So. It's important that whatever I put in here can eat this kind of food at this kind of ratio uh, to keep the balance going because the last thing I want to do on a really big tank like this is have to get in there. And really the situation where I have like with uh, the 3000 gallon where I have so many plants and everything and I have so many plants always breaking down that it's, it's, pretty, it's putting a lot of pressure on the filtration system in terms of uh, keeping phosphate at, at the right level. So, uh, I got a whole video coming up on that because there's been a lot going on there, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a real thing. You definitely have to think about the whole ecosystem uh, when you're putting these big ones together because a lot of the techniques you use on smaller tanks, they're just not viable here. You're just not going to be 
sticking your hand in here and sucking up the, you know, like doing gravel back here, or whatever, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. And you're not gonna be doing weekly water changes, especially with salt water. Uh, it would cost a fortune, you know, to be changing hundreds and hundreds of gallons of water, which is what it would take. On an 1800 gallon system, you've got to change many hundreds of gallons to, you know, for that percentage to do anything. So definitely the way I set this up, so I didn't have to do that with the massive 30 foot denitrification filter down there. Uh, and all the live rock in here and then keeping the, the stock and the feeding in check uh, with the bacteria in the, in the tank, the live rock. Uh, it's been the key and so far it's working. Don't want to jeopardize it, but uh, yeah, that's kind of the plan moving forward. Okay, so I guess the title might have been a little clickbaity because that wasn't just about uh, feeding the predator, uh, the sharks and the rays. It pretty much became an entire update on Predator Bay uh, as what's going on. So uh, I don't know how you look at that. Either clickbait or you got more than, than you bargained for. But uh, hopefully for people who keep, uh, who want to keep sharks and rays, that helps give you an idea of, uh, you know, how to, how to feed them. Um, you know, sort of the proofs in the pudding with the guys back here. Uh, growing healthy active you know looking great that's that's what you that's what you look for but uh, yeah mixing the diet uh, rotating the foods uh, supplementation uh, and then really uh, like I say with all my tanks just pay attention to what's going on in your tank you know you'll you'll see things coming before it gets uh, bad give yourself time to look things up or watch videos or do whatever and uh, you know what since I went ahead and ramble through this whole video and gave you the whole update i might as well give you the last thing uh that's changed on predator bay and what that is, is if you look up here on the top of the tank i added these little bracers or these little spacers in here to create gaps in the top uh, so what was going on is uh you know i've always said in the videos that i hardly have any evaporation well i really had no evaporation all the all the uh, uh the sumps are covered uh the protein skimmers covered tops covered and what I was doing, what the problem with that is there's no vapor, hardly any evaporation, but what was happening was inside the top of the tank, there's a good six inches or so above the water line. And it was just too much water in the, in the summertime when the AC is running down here, it's cooling the tops and that's hitting it. And it's like creating a rainforest on the, on the top of the uh, edges of the tank, uh, which it's all painted and everything, but it's, it's meant for uh, you know, some, it's, it's meant for humidity and light water contact. It's not meant just to have sitting water on it. Uh, so I went ahead and just put in those spacers, which allows the air to pass through. Um, so it's a little more humidity for my dehumidifier, my mini splits to manage, which they do. Um, and, uh, what it does, but it keeps that from happening where you don't get the rainforest effect in there. Uh, and the other thing is it, it creates a little more evaporation. So uh, one thing I want to point out is, I, you know, I say I don't, you know, obviously do things like gravel vacuuming. I don't do massive water changes or any water changes. Uh, I just maintain the live rock, the, the sump, the protein skimmer, and I do top off water. And what I want to point out is I like to do with Predator Bay, I like to use five gallon buckets and pour it in there. And actually uh, with it, when, when I had it uh, originally set up, I would do one bucket a week. And then when I got it fully covered, it went to like one five gallon bucket, like, whew, I don't know, like many weeks, few weeks for sure, two or three weeks for sure, uh, probably more like three. And uh, so lately with this uh, uh, pop, with the little pop-ups that let the air through, I'm noticing it's down to like one five gallon bucket every two weeks, which is, I think is great for such a huge tank. Uh, uh, it's pretty good. So that pretty much brings you up to speed on everything going on with Predator Bay. Uh, you know, in this video, I didn't move those little rocks around. I'm gonna, the, the eel sort of seemed to make it work for him. So I'm not too worried about it. I just like having the channel for the big guys to swim through. So I'm just gonna keep my eye out um, for some large rocks that I can put in there. And uh, that'll probably be the fix for that. Uh, so another saltwater video coming up soon because the 150 is getting uh the low-tech reef is getting mushed into the 600 gallon reef slope which is part of the 1500 gallon system and that whole sump's getting uh, a little bit of an upgrade the refugium uh, i won't go much too much into it but there's been some changes there some augmenting there and uh that system's just going to get some love some overall love uh i'm going to be hardcore on the dosing since it's one big system to dose and of course, I'm gonna you know give another crack at the corals and the macroalgae. And uh, like I always say, we're gonna make that thing look like a reef uh, one day, one day soon, hopefully. Uh, and the other thing too is the double DIY builds. Those new lights are kicking butt. Lots of bright green popping out everywhere. So that's good stuff there. Uh, I've been cranking on the 3,000 gallon. The thing is just a monster. Um, there's so much to go with that. I'm gonna leave it on a video because that's gonna be, I can do a mega video on that right now. There's been so much work I put into that thing and some ideas I have. 
uh, for it. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll put all that in the video. Discus are doing awesome. And uh, yeah, I think that's everybody. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for checking out the video and I'll, I'll see you guys soon.